so the first question I have for you is, uh, who were some of your early blues influences when you were first starting out playing the drums? Well, blues, I mean, there were only a few blues artists around that uh, that I was able to listen to. You know, I grew up in Pensacola, Florida, uh, until the age of 14. And uh, we only had one radio station. Well, actually, we had two stations. One played gospel, and the other didn't come on until about 6 p.m., <laughs> which was a uh, station out of Nashville called, uh, the, the the disc doctor's name was J.R. Okay. And uh, he played all of the Motown, and, well, he, he played a variety of music. So I was sort of limited in how many blues artists uh, I got a chance to listen to. But I would I would, I would imagine uh, Muddy Waters, um, people like that, you know, were probably my, my first influences. Sure. There was... Uh, Percy Mayfield, uh, he had a song called The River. I like that uh, I like that song. And uh, I would say John Lee Hooker, B.B. King, you know, just the, the standard blues guys. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, so when we're talking mm-hmm. about Memphis blues specifically, how would you describe kind of the music of Memphis compared to maybe Chicago or maybe Delta blues? Meaning the blues or just music in general that comes out of Memphis? Um, I guess blues, if you can go in-depth in that, otherwise in general. Okay, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm, my family moved to Memphis in 1965, so I wasn't around uh, to see some of the greats sure. out of Memphis. But Memphis music is an environmental situation. Uh, you know, they say it's in the mud, they say it's in the Mississippi <laughs> River, but uh, I, I think it's environmental. And uh, you, you, as you know, there are some noted great blues uh, personalities from Memphis, starting with W.C. Handy mm-hmm. and uh, Memphis Slim, uh, so many other people, even uh, Matt Guitar Murphy from the Blues That's Brothers. Right. You know, he, he was a Memphian. He spent a lot of time here. And uh, so I, I, I really do think it's in the water, the mud. I think it's uh, where we are geographically, and uh, like they say, it. Uh, I think it's in the water. <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> um, so when you were at uh, Stax, you backed um, just some incredible people. Um, Isaac Hayes, of course, Rufus Carla Thomas, Staple Singers, Albert King. Um, so when you were there, I mean, did it feel like what you were doing was kind of defining a new genre, or were you just kind of having fun? Well, it, it was both, you know. Sure. And uh, the the talent, the talent that that came in and out of that building, um, was not just limited to Memphis artists. You know, we had Richard mm-hmm. Pryor, we had uh, we had uh, Sammy Davis Jr., we had Billy Eckstein, we had some of the some of the best to, that that came through either under the Stax label or under one of its uh, subsidiary labels. Right. So we knew, we knew that what we were doing was, was, was history making because, uh, you know, they had a, a publicity department, they had a research department there mm. that kept all of us abreast on how many record sales, you know, uh, where the record was making its indenture uh, as far as the world is concerned. And uh, so we knew what we were doing was, was having a great impact on, on music and music history. But sure. at the same time, uh, most of the guys were just having fun because uh, even the guys that, went, uh, that have gone ahead of us, uh, Isaac Hayes, um, some of the other greats, uh, even those guys were in their early 40s. Uh, some started in their early 20s and 30s. And so they were young enough to still be adventurous, uh, to, 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 you know, to be interested in their craft. So uh, it was more fun than it was merit. But uh, I guess the merit in the end is, uh, is what stood out. That makes the sense to me. That, that was merited. Um, so speaking of, I was just going to say, uh, speaking of Isaac Hayes, what was it like working with him? Because you worked with him quite a few times over at Stax. Oh, I worked with Isaac Hayes from 1968 uh, until 1995. Wow. So um, it was longer than a a lot of us would realize. But um, it was phenomenal 
Isaac Hayes was a musical genius. He, he was Absolutely. a genius, and uh, it, it just—it was a feeling of pride, as well as uh, steady accomplishment. Uh, just working with him, just mm -hmm. any time it was time to play music with Isaac Hayes or record music with Isaac Hayes, it was an ultimate privilege because. Isaac, um, even though he, he did some great orchestrative stuff, right. it, his stuff was never, it was never boring. So myself, as, as the drummer behind his stuff, you know, he and I were super close. We, we always jived ourselves by saying we're so close that we can hear each other breathe. <laughs> so um, it, it was just phenomenal working with him. He, he was a musical genius, like I said, and then he was a kind-hearted person. He was a jokester. You know, he was a Leo, man. He loved to play <laughs> pranks and, uh, and, and, and have fun. And, uh, you know, he, he loved the opposite sex. So, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was pure joy. And he, he started off uh, just as a songwriter, right? Or was he always just kind of playing music? You know, there, there were so many stories about how, how Isaac started as well as who got him started, yeah. who gave him his first break. You know, everybody wants to get on the bandwagon. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I doubt if he started out as a songwriter because um, I think he, he started out as a musician and uh, who learned how to write songs through the many people that he hung out with. But uh, if, I, I would go as far as to say that he started out as a musician. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I want to ask you about uh, the Blues Brothers. When you first got that call that they wanted you to play kind of a fictionalized version of yourself in the movie, you know, what, what was your first thought mm -hmm. with that? Had you acted before? No, I hadn't. But, you know, uh, to be honest with you, as a child, I had a premonition really? that all that I have done, uh, seriously, all that I have done in my career... I had a premonition as a child that things like that were going to happen. So uh, I've always been a television movie fanatic, you know, as a kid. Never had any training, uh, never did any acting other than just, you know, a few school plays. Sure. But uh, when, when, when that opportunity came up for me to play, you know, uh, play myself, then uh, it, it, it was easy, to be honest with you. I mean, I didn't have that many lines, but the ones that I had were like short, so it was easy to, uh, you know, to 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 say my lines and and uh, put this character in reference to that line, you know, become yeah. that become that line. So uh, it, it it was amazingly funny, and it was a whole lot of fun, <laughs> and and also John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, you know, they made it such such a colossal event you know just being with those guys man and uh being a part of the dream that that danny and john and john landis foresaw you know it was just phenomenal it, it was one of the best things that's happened to me besides god there you go <laughs> you gotta throw that in there obviously <laughs> Um, so, I mean, you've toured with the Blues Brothers, uh, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, uh, part of the Barquets, of course. Um, is there anybody that you haven't played with that you'd like to? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, most of the artists that I, uh, that I work with, being from the uh, southeast region of the United States, mm -hmm. most of these artists cover the south, uh, the southeast area. There are many people that, um, that I would have loved to have played with. I would love to play with Ringo Starr. He's he's an idol of mine ever since I was 12 years old. And uh, I think that some of the stuff they're doing in New York City is phenomenal. Uh, I love the stuff that's done on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, the United States uh, and Britain is just colossal for, uh, for great music. Man. And, uh, yeah, I would have liked to have worked with a lot of the British groups, uh, Paul McCartney, a friend of mine, uh, his name is Blair Cunningham. He's a Memphian. And Blair was a younger kid that came up under uh, myself and some of his other uh, siblings. That uh, One of his brothers was, was the original drummer in the original arcades that died in the plane crash with oh, Otis really? Redding. So 
this young kid who was beneath us age-wise, he came up and became such a phenomenal player out of Memphis. Uh, he played with Paul McCartney, toured with him, wow. toured with Talking Heads. He toured with Talking Heads, Sade. Uh, as I said, Paul, uh, man, the kid became a phenomenon on the drums. That's so, incredible. yeah, there are a lot of people I would have would have loved to. Uh, you know, Mick Jagger, he spends a lot of time here in Memphis. He was here about a month ago oh, here really? in Memphis. And, yeah, so people like that, man. Yeah. I want to jam with Steven Seagal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Phil That'd be something Collins. to see. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, my last question for you, I was wondering if you could ask me if I've still got that money I owe you. <laughs> You still got the money. You got the money you owe me, man. <laughs> hey, man, I'll tell you something. Yeah. That that line, that line, which became my, my opening, if I'm not mistaken, that was my opening line. I think so. I'm pretty sure. And it 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 has come back to haunt me <laughs> really? tremendously. Because, you know, uh, I, I didn't get rich on that movie. You know, I was paid very well as a player. But, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that I was rich. Oh, man, what you do with all that money? Hey, man, I know you got a little money. I had one guy to tell me, I'm, I'm, when I ran into him, I'm saying, man, call me for some work. He said, man, I would have called you on a lot of projects, but I didn't think you needed the work. I didn't think you needed the money. I said, my God, you got to be crazy. Wow. But anyway, so when, 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 when the movie was finished, in between the first and the second movie, mm-hmm. I was broke, man. I was broke. You'd be surprised how many friends you you got when you got money. So sure. uh, you know, spending here, spending there, invest a little bit, get screwed out of that. But anyway, so um, I would borrow money from people, and these people, I, I never got a chance to pay everybody back. But uh, and some of the ones that I I weren't able to pay back. They would come to me. They wouldn't come to me in an angry form, you know, like, mm-hmm. man, I need my money. But when we'd be around a group of people, we would have a running joke. They could actually come to me and say, hey, Willie, you got the money you owe me, my <laughs> <laughs> and it And it would be all true. Yeah. You know, so really there funny. we go. We we laugh amongst each other. And, and uh, so that, uh, that, that line... Uh, it has haunted me, man, for the last thirty some years. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you feel any better, it's one of my favorite lines from the movie. So, you got that going for you. Oh yeah, man. And can, so, can you imagine having said the line and lived it too? <laughs> lived it too. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, people. Yeah. I, I've got friends that'll be able to walk up to my grave site and ask that question. <laughs> 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 and it and it be true, you That's know. Funny. Yeah. Well, Willie, thanks so yeah. much for uh, taking time out of your day to talk with me. I really do appreciate it. Hey, I really enjoyed it too, and it's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, I wish you much success. Thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, brother. Well, call me. Call me again. I will. All right. All right. Okay.